In 19th century Germany, Friedrich Froebel laid the first stone for what would become the kindergarten, a revolutionary approach to early childhood education. And his approach emphasized play, hands-on activities, and nurturing children's natural abilities and their interest. He believed that the importance of creating an educational environment that was responsive to the needs of the child was very important. Now, fast forward over a century, and the essence of this hands-on learning and this curiosity-driven exploration that Froebel championed now infiltrates our digital realm, especially when it comes to your journey learning ethical hacking. So today, I want to give you some strategies and resources that will help you to accelerate your journey to learn ethical hacking. There's this learning principle called Montessori, and it focuses much like Froebel's kindergarten on hands-on, curiosity-driven learning. And Montessori and constructivist principles emphasize the importance of self-directed learning. In Montessori and constructivist kindergartens, children learn through self-directed activities. They choose what interests them. And there's a supportive environment that fosters independence and curiosity. And educators guide rather than instruct. And this emphasizes the child's active role in their own learning. So how can you apply this? To truly understand ethical hacking, you must immerse yourself in the environment and the problems that you want to solve. This means you might set up your own lab. This is an environment for safe and legal experimentation. That's something we will go over in a future video. I'm working on one to show you how to build out a complete hacking lab to learn ethical hacking for very, very little cost. Tools like VirtualBox and VMware combined with vulnerable machines from platforms like VulnHub or Hack the Box, they provide a sandbox for your curiosity, your creativity, and to learn. First, set realistic goals and tackle projects that excite you, whether it's understanding network security through setting up your own networks or if it's exploring web vulnerabilities on something like OWASP WebGoat, choose the projects that align with your interest and your skill level. Now, online platforms offer structured pathways, but don't be afraid to tailor these to fit your own interest, your own pace, and your own objectives. Don't feel obligated to follow someone else's roadmap. Blaze your own trail if you want. Do you remember when your kindergarten teacher might have you draw a picture about what you learned? Maybe about a history lesson or something you read in a book. There was a good reason for that. Reflection is crucial. After each project or after every hacking challenge that you do, take time to analyze what worked and what didn't work. And this lessons learned phase, if you will, is about understanding your failures, your shortcomings, and then using them as stepping stones for the future. You could use tools like Jupyter Notebooks or GitHub repositories or simple Word documents to track your hypothesis, the methods and the process you follow, and the outcomes of those particular methods. Which worked, which didn't, how could you improve? This reflective practice not only cements your learning, but it also guides your next steps so that you can be more effective. You can look back on these later. And trust me, there is no way that you can store all of this information in your brain. Writing it down is important. The next principle that you applied in kindergarten probably didn't even realize was collaborative learning. Hacking is not a solitary endeavor. You need support and you need friends to help you. So engage with online communities on platforms like Reddit or Discord where you can share insights, seek advice, and find mentorship. Check some of the resources and links below for some of my favorite Reddit and Discord groups. Now forums and groups dedicated to ethical hacking are treasure troves of collective knowledge. Be sure you participate, share your own experience, what you're learning, and embrace this communal approach to learning. It's pretty important. Did you ever make cookies in kindergarten? You learned to measure, to add, and you applied the things that you were learning to real world applications. Do the same thing in your hacking journey. Seek out real world applications for your skills. This could mean contributing to open source security projects, participating in bug bounty programs, capture the flag events, or simply applying your newfound knowledge to secure your personal digital footprint. Help your family do the same. Real-world applications not only enhance your skills, but they can help build your resume and your professional network. One of my favorite ways to do this are the lab environments in TryHackMe. They're part of the paid tier, but they give you very realistic environments to practice in. These are what you would find in a real company, and they're not hypothetical like a hack the box would be. Now, when I was in kindergarten, we had a journal. We cut out math problems we liked and we'd glue them in, or we'd write down letters. We did all sorts of things in our journals. 
And again, this was a deliberate approach by the teachers. Keeping a record of your learning journey serves multiple purposes. A private journal might allow for personal reflection, while something like a public blog or a YouTube channel could connect you with a community of learners and experts and help you along your learning journey. Don't worry about coming across as an expert. You don't have to be perfect at what you do. Focus on sharing your genuine progress, the challenges you have, any insights you might gain, because this transparency is valuable both for you, your own growth, and for anyone who might be interested in following in your footsteps. They say, if you want to learn something, teach it. Now, continuous learning. Montessori education promotes continuous learning by fostering a love for learning that goes beyond the classroom. And this philosophy encourages students to be curious, to be self-motivated learners who go and seek out knowledge on their own for their own sake, not just to pass tests. You probably remember being encouraged to point out colors to your parents or to find items pertaining to science and to bring them in for show and tell. This fostered an enjoyment for learning and the field of ethical hacking evolves rapidly. You have to continuously be learning. You have to stay updated with the latest tools, the latest techniques, the latest vulnerabilities. You can follow industry news, attending conferences are great too. Engage with ongoing education through courses. Maybe you want to do some certifications. Your learning journey in ethical hacking is never over. Trust me. There's always a new layer to uncover, a new challenge to tackle, something else you want to do, a new idea you have. And the more you love it, the better you'll become at it. So as we wrap up, remember, learning ethical hacking is as much about the mindset as it is about the technical skills. By adopting this hands-on and self-directed approach and embracing failure as a learning opportunity, you align with the core principles of Montessori and constructivism. Collaborate, reflect, and continuously adapt. Remember, the path to becoming an effective ethical hacker is unique for each individual. Embrace your own curiosity, engage with the community, and never stop learning.